Hi, I'm Eileen Roach, founder of Designs and Machine Embroidery, and thanks for joining me today. We're going to talk all about hoops, monster hoops, that is, because they are the best way to hoop. We're going to talk small, medium, and large, and even jumbo. We'll be talking multiple brands, so I hope you'll uh, stay tuned and see how we're going to hoop um, terry cloth towels, ribbons, onesie, left chest t-shirt for standard placement, center chest t-shirt for kind of creative placement. What else do I have here? I have a pair of blue jeans, so we'll do a pant leg. I have a large quilt, and I also have a table runner. In addition to that, you'll see some of the November doors, and you will also um, we'll take a look at the treasures of the past, and I hope I remember to do it. Often I have a beautiful one on the table to share with you, and I wind up signing off before even remembering to bring it up. So thank you for joining me. And uh, hello, Isabel, over in France. It's lovely to have you here. So many of you joining in. <clears throat> I really appreciate it. Um, you know, we've made some new hoops, and that's super exciting. So I thought uh, we would maybe talk about those first. We are going to, um, we're introducing the Viking Foff 360 by 200 and also the Viking 200 by 200. So here it is. I mean, it's a big, beautiful hoop. This is the 360 by 200. As you can see out of the box, recognized by your machine. Of course, it comes with the magnetic top and then our metal flat bottom, which is just fabulous for hooping all kinds of different things that you're going to see today. So I thought before um, we get started, let's take a look at the doors because I know many of you have been uh, following along and stitching along. So let's go ahead and do that. Our, uh, as you know, January, February, March, and April, May, June, July, and August are all still available on our website <clears throat> and will be to the end of the year. But uh, th then we had September, October, and November is our latest. So some doors that I found out on the web are uh, Carolyn Brown, which I think is just adorable. She's got an owl sitting up there right above the hayloft. And she has a small child with a, a beagle, I think, trying to get into the barn door. Oh, I love that. Look at the, the cap on the little boy. Isn't that delightful? And then Jack Jones. Now, when I read Jack Jones's comment, she said that she's actually a crazy quilter, meaning she loves that technique. Um, but she added some really wonderful dimensions. First off, look at that sign at the top, milk and cream, that it looks like it's some kind of additional, um, you know, pre-printed either fabric or a badge that she has attached to her door. And then she has some rope, freestanding rope that's hanging from the side of the barn there, just to the left of the door. And that wheel is, I believe, 3D as are the pumpkins. So. Super cute, huh? Aren't they great? Judy Warren, you say love those doors. I know they are so impressive. They are so impressive. And Sharon Rhodes Capril says, the minis are wonderful. Where did you find them? Uh, not sure, maybe if Carolyn Brown or Jack Jones are watching, they'll pipe in and say that. And Vicki Doreen, you have not been able to find the November door, so we'll get that link up there for you and you can just go there to download it. Uh, let's see. And um, the next one I have is Muriel Butler. Now, I think Muriel is in France. I'm not sure, but look at the beautiful landscape setting that she set her her door on, you know, a surface and then photographed it with that beautiful landscape behind it. And then let's take a closer look at her door. That hand-painted fabric, I, well, and I'm not sure if it's hand-painted. I'm guessing, but it looks like it's hand painted and it is perfectly positioned with that sun just to the uh, northeast of the weather vane, right? And if you'll notice down at the bottom of her door, she's added a hen sitting on a small, you know, mound of hay and then also a rooster. Super fun. Oh, I love that. 
Okay, wrong mouse. I have a couple things going on here. Patty Fernie Dunnington. She added a singing dog. Uh, is he just adorable? Right down there in the foreground in front of the barn doors. He's whistling his time away, which is just lovely. And Patricia O'Neill Page, she added uh, corn husks, you know, like a bouquet of corn husks for her November decoration on her doors. And of course, she has a a basket there in the foreground filled with leaves. And hello, Ain McCarthy. Ain McCarthy says that sky fabric is perfect. It is absolutely on Patty. Well, I love the light blue on Patricia Page. And then that kind of stormy sky on Patty Forney. Dunnington is just beautiful. And of course, maybe you actually mean Muriel Butler, right? Really great sky fabrics, all three examples. Very, very well done. Speaking of Ain McCarthy, here is Ain's door. She just um, sent this over. Isn't that great? So she has a blue or kind of turquoise barn, and she has a small child, a little girl with an A on her dress. Now, I think there's more to the story here, and I don't know the rest of the story, but I would imagine maybe that is symbolic of Anne McCarthy herself when she was a small girl growing up on a farm. And you'll notice it above her name, I have Doc in quotes. Well, that's her nickname because she's actually a veterinarian. And Ayn McCarthy is one of our dime educators. And maybe many of you have seen her work or have attended some of her seminars, her virtual seminars or her seminars in stores. You know, she did travel for dime back when we were all allowed to travel. And she actually teaches occasionally at a local dealership here in Texas at Richland Sewing in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Great job, Ayn. Just love that uh, the sketch of the little girl, uh, that car kind of cartoon character, little stick figure, really cute. And of course, the horse's head. And you know, notice what she did to her door. You know, she took it a step ahead and uh, added black applique fabric to that a portion of the door. I'm sure you opened it up in Perfect Embroidery Pro and found out how to do um, all you know, all those steps, add another applique. Oh, I love it. Really great job. Really, really great job. So let, now that we're going to talk about hoops, where can you get that hoop? Well, probably at your local dealer. And when you go to your local dealer, this is the where, what you'll find on the, on the shelf, right? This is when you purchase your hoop in a store, this is the packaging that you will see. And, you know, it has some information on the back, just really kind of, you know, marketing and so forth. But, you know, what's really important is this yellow tab, or it could be green or pink, whatever color, but it will tell you the name of your machine, of the hoop that's inside, the size of it. And then here, it has the machine compatibility. And that machine compati compatibility is what tells you, you bought the right hoop for your machine. It's kind of like buying sheets, you know, twin, queen, full size, or um, king size. You, you, if the label matches your bed, you know you have the right sheet. So if the label on the hoop box matches your machine, then you know you have the right box. Now, when you order from us and purchase online, uh, uh, wrong mouse. I have two mice here. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to show you on our website where, you know, we have uh, dzgns.com. You search for hoops and in there you will then find access to our compatibility chart. And that is um, a whole list of all the machines and the compatibility. So these are the steps on how to download it. And that is what you will find. So in the left-hand column is the machine model, the machine brands and models. And on the right, all those columns on the right are the machine sizes. That those skinny little numbers, you know, like LM5, LM2 are, is an internal identifier, but it is also on your box. It will be, you know, like right here is a, <laughs> everything's backwards on a camera, is HM4. Not that you really have to worry about that, but that's just how it goes. All right, now, when you order from us, you're going to get a different kind of packaging. 
we are streamlining stream streamlining our packaging and trying to preserve uh, excess packaging so you will get a white box that is sealed with tape clear tape it will have this outer label telling you the size of the hoop and the brand and then there's our internal number lm1 it will also have the compatibility so you you know you can be confident that it's going to match your machine that's it is no different than the product that you would pick up in a retail location but in order for you know us to kind of streamline that packaging and just not be so wasteful because everything that's important is inside that box it is not outside that box so don't think that you got the wrong thing you're getting the right thing okay so what are we going to hoop well shall we go hoop shall we go take a look at how to hoop all right let's head over um first i just you know i wanted to show you that new 360 by 200 for viking and fop and the compatibility of course is on our chart you'll know what machines it's recognized by and that attachment is recognized by the machine. So when you get your machine, when you get your hoop, you uh, will also have centering rulers. So let me bring them in. These come in the box and they are not on the hoop. So you'll apply them, but you can go to my blog and download this crosshair design. You just hoop but cutaway stabilizer is a good idea. And you will stitch this crosshair in a contrasting thread. And then if you have perfect alignment laser, you could illuminate the beam over that crosshair and use that extended beam to attach your rulers. But if you don't have that, you can use a, um, a ruler to just extend that line of stitching out to the outer frame. So what I've done here is I'm lining up the line on the ruler with that stitched line underneath, making sure it's nice and straight. And actually on this, because that's a translucent hoop, I mean, uh, ruler, I can, you know, snug that right underneath that frame. And then I would take this ruler and I wanna put that zero right at the center. So I'll go ahead and I'll apply that on here. It takes, you know, you just have to like peel that off, separate the protective paper from the adhesive ruler and always best not to do that on camera, <laughs> right? Here we go. Okay, so we'll pull that all off. And then I'm just centering that zero right at that line, right at that line. Finger press in place and then take a pair of scissors. Do you know how many pairs of scissors I had here five minutes ago? I must have had five pairs of scissors, not five, but three definitely. And so I'll just snip these off. That's excess. We could throw them away. And now we can apply the one on the bottom. So we'll just move that ruler down, making sure it continues to be nice and straight and aligned with that stitch line. And I'll do the same thing. Sometimes it might help to kind of start the corner a little bit. Okay, there we go. Now I do like to put my lines inside the hoop. I think it's easier to read. So then I'll take my zero and I'll position that, lining it up exactly with that line and snip off that excess on both sides. Okay. And then for the side, I could do the same thing. So I don't think you need to watch me do that, but it would be the exact same treatment. I would do it in this fashion. I would snug that ruler underneath and you're going to notice that it is not centered in the frame, right? It is centered in the sewing field, not necessarily the frame. So don't sweat that out. Okay. Just go with your gut, stitch that crosshair without moving it dead. You know, you will just bring the crosshair up on the screen of the machine, stitch it. It will be dead center in the sewing field, and then you'll be good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna move this away. And then we're gonna talk about, will this harm my machine?
So um, I'm just looking at some of your comments. Please repeat while in camera view. Okay, was I not in camera view? Okay, let's do that again. I'll do another one. Uh, I see, oh, my long rulers. Okay, let's do it like this. Oh, we're getting a little, um, little feedback, aren't we? Okay, we'll do that again. So it's a good thing y'all can talk to me, right? Uh, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am lining up, and let's do this like this. So I am positioning that ruler. I'm sticking the end kind of underneath my, my frame, and I'm making sure that that line is directly on the stitched line underneath of it. So it is aligned, and I know that that's going to designate the center of my hoop. So now I will just remove the, the protective paper on the back of the ruler and take the, take the zero and I am centering that zero, aligning it with that line, making sure that that line is aligned with my zero. And then I just finger press that in place. And as I said previously, I like my lines to be inside my frame instead of my numbers, because actually the lines are more important than the numbers. The numbers really mean almost nothing to me once when I'm in the hoop. And I can, you know, peel this up a little bit, make sure I am right at the edge of that frame, but inside the edge. And then I am perfectly uh, have that attached. And since you didn't get to see the First two, you just listen to me babble. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do that last one. All right. So again, I am lined up. The, the, the line on the ruler is aligned with my stitched crosshair. And you know, it's really important to stitch that crosshair in a color thread that you can see. And if you're like me, you have at least 200 different colors. So some of them will be visible. So I'm aligning that zero with that line. And then I just smooth it in place, snip it off on the end, like so, and repeat that over here. Okay, and there we go. That was good. Okay, and let's see. Deborah Ness Clark wants to know, is the crosshair file the same for all size hoops? I think we have several on there. Okay, and the crosshair is actually on my blog. So if you take a look at that link in the comments, um, there's a blog posting with the download link for the zip file. There are several different files, but you know, if, it's, if there's just one, all you would do is take a, a pen and a ruler and just extend that line. So let's go ahead and do that. Because, you know, it, the most important part of this is right here. All these legs don't really mean a thing. So, and then I would just do the same over here, you know, making sure that I'm doing a nice straight line and like so. But, you know, your needle is going to align itself with the center every time. I use these marks on my hoop. Um, I use these marks on my hoop for aligning seams. That's a, when I'm quilting. That's about all I use it for. So, you know, I worry about placement inside, not so much out there. All right, let's move this out of harm's way and talk about if, uh, you know, lots of people say, will the magnetic hoops hurt my machine? So I have a good demo to show you that it will not. First off, you know, back in the day, right, our, our hoops, uh, our machines were a lot smaller and the brain on the machine was as big as, you know, a desktop telephone, right? And today, that brain in your gigantic embroidery machine is about the size of your thumbnail. Think about your cell phone, every, all the power in your cell phone, it's very similar. So, um, in your machine, the working, you know, computerized part of the machine is highly insulated. You don't really have to worry about it. So let's take a pair of scissors and you can see it will easily stick to the bottom of the monster hoop, right? Very easily stick to that. But then when, when I, <laughs> I have a, 
I have a lot of hoops here. It gets slightly magnetic, right? So then when I place these two together, and don't ever do that, you'll notice now my scissors don't stay there. They, the, the magnetic force is on top of the metal. It is not coming out of the bottom of the metal. So you're not going to hurt your machine. You're not going to hurt your machine. Okay, that's a good test to illustrate that point. All right, now let's get going on hoop. Well, let me make sure I have, how much are these measuring tapes? Um, the measuring tapes come with the rulers. And uh, Susan Eddings, you wish you knew this before applying my rulers. In the instructions that come in with your hoops uh, is the link for the crosshair that you can download and also instructions on how to do it. So, but maybe you bought yours a couple years ago. All right, we are going to start by hooping um, a towel. So let's go ahead and hoop a towel. So I have a terry cloth towel here, and I have a template, right? So let's go ahead and open up my towel. I've already marked my center kind of with a crooked, crooked pin, but it's good enough. And I'm going to take my perfect placement kit template, which is hand towel with border, and I am positioning the top of the border on a line with the top of the border. And then I will place a target sticker right inside, aligning the crosshair on the target sticker with the crosshair on the template. Now, if you have a baby locker brother machine, you most certainly can use the uh, snowman or the positioning sticker. That's why this opening is square, because you know, even though those Place positioning stickers are fabulous on the machine. You have to you have to put it in the location you want, right? That machine doesn't know where it is supposed to go on the machine. All right, so now I have my placement positioned, and now I'll take a four by four hoop, and I'll place that on my flat surface, and I'm going to cover it with tearaway stabilizer, a nice tearaway. And I like to position uh, it right against the edge of the attachment. And then I will place my target sticker pretty much in the center. Now, one thing that's nice is a nice tip. You can fold back the, a towel that has a border. And since I can kind of see through my stabilizer, I can see that I'm fairly square, right? <laughs> Fairly square, is there such a thing? I don't think so. Okay, and then I just drop that in place. Now I did that kind of fast, so let's kind of slow down and do that again. And I did it, you know, as a veteran would do it. But if this is your first time, then I would suggest you take your, your hoop magnetic top frame and place it perpendicular to the frame on the bottom and feel with your finger that the metal frame is somewhat aligned. Doesn't have to be perfectly aligned. You just don't want it like all the way up here. You know, you want it somewhat aligned. And then we're just going to drop it, keep my hand out of the way, and then I can smooth and tug the fabric. Now, if your design is big and it's gonna fit your four by four hoop, well, then you're gonna to have to pay a little bit more attention to the placement and get that centered. I like to use perfect alignment laser to do that but you don't have to. You can also kind of just work the fabric, eyeball it. You get really good at this after a while. You'll be able to see exactly where it goes. And, and because you can make my minute adjustments right in the hoop, because you can't do that with a standard hoop, right? Pull that fabric, get it nice and taut so you have no snow, no snow plowing, then you're good to go. Okay. Okay, so here we have someone who is uh, a step ahead of us, Becky Munns. She says that she just jumped over to our website. She downloaded the crosshair and it comes in a four by four and six by 10. She doesn't see one for the five by seven. No, I don't believe there is another one. So on the, you would just use the four by four and just extend those lines like I showed you how to do with a ruler. That's all, it's the same kind of crosshair. The six by 10 is intended for the larger hoop, six by 10 and larger. So you'll, you'll be doing just fine with that. Uh, Stacy Thomas, you wish your 880 plus would automatically de detect my magnetic hoop. Um, 
well, you can tell it that what size it is and it would know that, right? Let's see. Do we have a video for the PAL? We have lots of videos for, um, for all of our product. Uh, do we actually have one for the PAL? Uh, maybe some, Maybe one of my team members can pipe in here and help with that. Okay, so let's see. Now, the next thing we're going to hoop is, what's on my list? Oh, a onesie. I know everybody wants to hoop a onesie. Everybody wants to hoop a onesie. Okay, so let's go ahead and get those materials out. And I have my onesie. So here it is inside out. Okay, so obviously this is the back and this is the front. And I have stabilizer. I have our poly mesh. Um, what's not poly mesh? I need to stop saying that. <laughs> it's our no show fusible that is already fused in place to the design area of the garment. And I have placed my the flat magnetic bottom, no, flat metal bottom on the surface of my work surface. And then I am going to insert the the magnetic top into the garment. And I wanna do that, I wanna flip the design area down. So here's the back, that's that snap opening. And I'm gonna insert the frame and make sure that I can uh, just kind of center it. And what I'm going to add right here is a hoop guard. So this is going to be at the front of the hoop. Frankly, I should have done that. Let's, let's redo that. Let's redo that live. It's live, but oh my, this is what happens in my sewing room. I'm sure it happens in your sewing room. You have a better idea, right? Okay, so now I have my hoop guard. As you can see, this is kind of a flat metal barrier and it snaps onto the bottom of the monster hoop and it just stays right in place. And I am going to thread this through the onesie, through the snap opening first, and I'm gonna come out the neck, right? This all seems a little odd, but it makes sense in a moment. And then holding that onesie, making sure it's kind of taut on the design side, I just snap that in place and then I'm gonna pull that onesie over hoop guard and that will open up that design area. And then I can just stitch my design. Uh, you know, and it would feed onto the machine in this fashion. So my foot and needle will be able to just pass over the surface. Of course, I would like pull the fabric down until I get through that obstruction and then open that up. And then I just have that completely placed. So, yeah. Super fun, I love, I love the hoop guard. That makes it really easy to use. Okay, so then let's go ahead and do left chest embroidery, uh, left chest on a man's um, polo shirt. So we'll bring that down. And you can see again, I have our, our no-show mesh is applied to the inside. And I do like to use the fusible. I kind of think it's like cheating, but why not? It's just great. It takes the stretch out of the garment during the embroidery process. I'm gonna lift that collar up out of harm's way. And then I will use our, uh, our helper, our embroiderer's helper is centering it over the buttonhole. And this is a size small. So I will uh, carefully lift that and attach a target sticker aligning it up with that small notch. And there we have it in place. I'm, I didn't do that so great, but there we have it. Okay, so now, Again, on a single needle machine, and this is all single needle machine instruction. So I will take, this is gonna be a small left chest design. I'm gonna take that metal four by four and put it inside the garment and I can feel it all around my garment. I can, I can see that I am centered right in that space, which is the design area and that's oh so important, right? And then we'll just uh, take our top frame and drop that in place. And if it feels like it doesn't hold, it's because you're not aligned. Like right here, here's my metal frame. I'm not aligned. So I just gently slide that up into place. 
And again, because this is a flat magnetic hoop, I can smooth that fabric and make sure that it's nice and taut inside the frame. I don't have to worry about distorting the fiber. Now, in order to stitch this, I'm going to have to turn this inside out. And I'm going to use my magnet shield. Now, this is what comes between the magnetic top and the magnetic bottom. No, the magnetic top and the metal bottom. Uh, when you purchase the hoop and it's separated with this, we call it the magnet shield so that it's easy to separate the top from the bottom. And we always store our hoops with this in place. This is also really handy for transporting a hooped item. So I'll just slip this inside the garment underneath that metal frame. And then when I go to transport this around my sewing room, right, I have to get over to my machine and so forth, I don't have to worry about it. But before I do that, I'm going to stay here on my work surface and I'm going to nest this whole garment inside out. I even make sure I flip those sleeves wrong side out because it seems to me they are the pieces that get caught underneath the hoop, right? So I don't want that to happen. I don't want a vest or, you know, something stitched inadvertently to the back of my hoop right in that design area. So when I move to the machine, I have it all inside out and folded like this. I lift it with that plastic shield on the bottom, and then I can transport this and not have to worry about anything being damaged. And then once I get to the machine, you know, it takes a moment, you have to slide it on and, you know, you want to make that as flat as possible. And then we want to open that up and just stay, you know, with it. Would I use a hoop guard in this instance? Not in a man's shirt. It's too big. This is a small hoop. I don't have to worry about that falling in. Most likely, if I am worried, I would put it on the right hand side where that one sleeve is. I would probably put it right here. And then I wouldn't have to worry about this part falling in. But uh, normally on a, on a man's shirt, I wouldn't do that. Okay, so what is next? Oh, we'll have um, a, a, a sleeve hem. So this is kind of interesting. Let's take a look here. Um, you can, you know, this is commercial, uh, a logo. Um, from a company that this is a, a work shirt for um, Taffa International. And this is normally stitched on a multi-needle machine, you know, a tubular machine with a very, with a small four by four, but the sleeve loops around the throat of the machine. But since we're today, we're talking about single needle machines like our brother and our baby lock and our Bernina and Viking that are just flatbed machines. I, I can't do that, right? So I've turned my shirt inside out and I've taped down this excess sleeve so that I can put that small logo on. Super easy to do. Now I do fuse that uh, no-show mesh to the wrong side of that shirt and I make sure that piece is extra large and extends beyond the sleeve and beyond the hoop. And that is really, that's the only thing that's hooped down in this area, of course, up here and I'll untape this now so you can get a better look. You know, of course, the, the sleeve itself is secured in the hoop with the uh, fusible stabilizer, but that's a really easy way to do that sleeve decoration. And you know, it's a nice thing to, a nice touch to um, work uniforms or golf shirts, that kind of thing, love that. And let's see, Candy Bray wants to know, would I use a hoop guard uh, for when I'm quilting? Yeah, we're gonna get to quilting for sure. But maybe let me pop over here and see how, what other questions we have. How many stitches can <laughs> no show fusible handle from an embroidery design? That sounds like a question we would have like in that old game show, Truth and Qu Consequences. You know, I'm not sure how many stitches, but um, I've never had an issue with it. Our good friend, Deborah Jones may be watching and, you know, she wrote the book or the compass anyway on, um, on what stabilizers to use. Uh, and maybe she has a guide for stitch count below 40,000. You do X stabilizer and stitch count above, but I don't know. 
I don't know. Okay, so let's go back over. What's our next thing? Oh, I have a ribbon. All right, so how are we going to do a ribbon? Oh, and I had stabilizer for it. Things have been kind of flying out of where they were supposed to all stay together. Oh, one thing I do want to show you before we move over to that is um, this test where you, I'm going to do this on the big camera, where you actually hoop something and hold it up. People say, you know, will your hoop hold a terry cloth towel? Will it hold a table runner? Will it hold a large hoop? I'm not a large hoop, but a large quilt. This is the test because if it stays together when you do this, you know it will stay together when you're actually stitching. And if it doesn't stay together when you're stitching, it's because the fabric is draped around the machine and it is, you know, dragging the hoop. It's not that there's not enough hold, it's because it's dragging and you'll see, we'll go over to the machine a little later, but that's, that's a good uh, tip for you to remember. So when you're testing, you know, your beautiful quilt that you've spent so much time on and you want to know, oh, can I quilt it in that hoop? That's how you test it. Okay. So here we're going to do a ribbon and I, I just have some tearaway stabilizer because when you do ribbon, you most certainly want to get rid of the stabilizer. You might want to use a heat away. You also might use a water soluble stabilizer, but for today's lesson, we will just use um, this ribbon. And so first I'm going to use this mat so that you can, I can use those lines. Wait, let's use the big line. Here I am centered, right? So I, I'm just eyeballing this, that it's somewhat in the center of the hoop. And that's such a nice dark line. I can see that through my stabilizer. And what I want to do is align my template crosshair with that line. And I can see through it to a certain extent. And that will help me be centered in the hoop. Now, I like to kind of do this gradually, like I just did. I placed one end of the hoop and then positioned the, the ribbon. And if you find this isn't straight, well, this is what you can do. You can pull on it and tug, make sure it's getting nice and straight. You can also lift this frame a little bit so that you can get this straighter. Some people also like to hoop, um, you know, draw a line right on the stabilizer so that they line up the edge of the ribbon with that. You can do multiple ends like, here we go. Let's, let's go ahead and I'll show you how to do that. This is the hard part, right? Getting it separated. There is a little notch here and just lift or slide is the easiest way. So I have the, the template on this side uh, of this end of the ribbon and then I can open up the other end. And you know, if you're doing happy birthday as like uh, around a basket or something <laughs> or you're, um, I better cut this off because there's actually something written on this. So let's cut that off because then, then it won't make any sense. So we have both of our ribbons in place. And then we can stitch, you know, happy on one end and birthday on the other. And I kind of like keep my fingers out of the way and then I can smooth and tug on this and make sure that's nice and flat. And the same with this, you know, and this is wired ribbon, which makes it easy to keep things aligned. And then I can just uh, stitch happy and birthday over here and I'm good to go. So that's that. Okay. Then let's switch over to kind of what I said would be a creative shirt. Would you cut the, let's see, Bernadette wants to know, would you cut the stabilizer after you fuse it? Uh, well, I, are you talking about uh, on the garment? Yes, you would. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, so here is uh, a silk screen t-shirt that I thought needed a little bit of jazz because that's really pretty plain. So I have this pretty little flower that I'm going to stitch right in the center of that silk screen flower and really pick that up. And um, 
Okay. So I have already applied my uh, no-show mesh to the wrong side. And then I'm going to take my five by seven hoop that I just used for the ribbon and I'll undo that. Now this time, because this is such a, this is a woman's la large or extra large, extra large. So this is a fairly large shirt and you know, I could hoop it like this. That's a little tight, but I could also hoop it like this because I'm not on a tubular machine. I'm on a flat single bed, uh, you know, flat machine, single needle. So I don't really have to orientate it the other way. So I'm going to go ahead and slide that inside. And again, I'm going to feel where everything is. And I can feel it. That looks good. Drop that in place. And then I'll nest that on top. And remember, this is also when I use that um, magnet shield to transport my hoop over to the machine. I'm going to flip all this inside out. There we go. And then when I get to the machine, I would attach it to the machine in this fashion. Here's all the bulk of that shirt over on this side. That's great. And then I would just position my needle over each of those crosshairs and uh, stitch my flower. If you have the you know, those beautiful Solaris or Luminaire, you could project your flower onto, actually you wouldn't even need the template, you could just project this flower onto this silk screen flower and stitch the design. So lots of ways to uh, achieve placement, yep. Okay, what else is next? What I, oh, I have jeans, right? I have jeans, okay. So here's a pair of jeans that, um, I can tell you, girlfriends, look at these. Look how tiny these are. I am never wearing these again. That, that's a fact. In fact, I never wore these, but I do know two human beings that they actually fit. <laughs> okay. So here I have, uh, I'm going to do some outer leg embellishment, right? And I want to, you know, go kind of high. I'll probably do a couple repeats. But what I've done is I've opened up the inseam and I left it closed down near the hem. I could have opened the hem and I could have opened this. I do know how to reattach this so you still get that cool look. But you know, why, if I'm not gonna stitch all the way down there, why do I have to do that? And so then I'm going to take that five by seven hoop that I had on my silkscreen t-shirt, and I'm going to place that underneath my jeans and I would have stabilizer. So let's go ahead and do that. I could fuse the, the, um, the no-show mesh to the back of this blue jean. I could have done that, uh, but I can also just use a tear away in this fashion. Uh, you know, that's, that's a personal choice. Either way works for me. Okay, so then I just have to get this inside that opening, there we go, and make sure it's aligned. Pull that fabric, smooth it out, and then I would again transport it to the machine with that plastic shield underneath, and that's gonna stitch beautifully. Now, you know, this is a lot of weight, right? This is a whole lot of weight, these blue jeans. So I'm gonna have to make sure I secure that heavy pant around the machine making sure it's not falling off the table and dragging the hoop. That's really important. That's really important. Okay, so let's now, what else do we have? It's time to t-shirt left front. Okay, we did towels. All right, so let's take a look at, if we have any more questions. Uh, McDowell, you haven't used your magnetic hoop. Oh, girlfriend or boyfriend, please do that immediately. Go get a terry cloth towel. One that's in your ki kitchen or bathroom and just write your name on it. Just check it out. Let's see. Um, so let's see. Let's, how many stitches did Deborah, Deborah Jones ask that? Deborah Jones, do you have, oh, she says it will hold at least 15,000 stitches. That's a lot of stitches. So good to know, Deborah. Thank you. She, that's who you ask, folks. That's who you ask. You don't ask me those particular things. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, uh, let's see. Okay, 
Um, your magnetic hoop, Jeanette, has been on back order. Oh, yeah, I'm hoping that you get it too. I don't know what one you want. We do have almost all are in are in stock, uh, but we have been back ordered a little bit. And did you see my comment question? Anne, would you write that again? We have you know several hundred comments here, so if you would write your question again, uh, I'll see if we can answer it. And then we're going to move over to quilt. So here we have, you know, a table runner, right? And this is an eight by eight hoop. That's a really popular size hoop, uh, hoop because, you know, it handles quilt blocks so well. And uh, it's just really pretty fun. Really a great size hoop. But over on our machine, we have the 10 by 16, which is attached to the machine. You should see the mess I made over here. So let's go ahead and get that rolling. Now I don't have my hoop guard attached and I should. So if I could find that, I'll put it on so you could see where that goes. This is, uh, okay, I got my hoop guard and we'll go ahead and get that machine rolling so you can see how it will stitch. So, you know, I am pretty close to the right edge of the machine, of the, of the quilt. So I don't really need hoop guard right now, but whenever I'm stitching a quilt, I always make sure that I, I just leave hoop guard right in place. And I've already, you know, uh, spent some time with the placement and this is where I want to be. It's not actually stitching with thread and I've frankly took the needle out so that we could just do this demo because um, it's just easier. This isn't a sew along, this is a hoop along. So we're just teaching that. But this will stitch that whole design, that beautiful oh, kind of fancy swirly design. And then when it's complete, it will be time for me to remove this frame. So we'll just go ahead and make pretend we're at that point now. And I'll just hit zero so it goes back to the center of the hoop. And then I would just lift my top frame and I can position it here on the head of the machine, depending on your machine, depending on the size of the hoop. This is the nine by 14. And you know, the 10 by 16 actually goes all the way over. So, um, you know, maybe you don't want to store it up top. I sometimes take it off and uh, position it, uh, I attach it to my table leg because I have a metal table leg and it stands there perfectly waiting to be put into use again. So that's as, e as easy as can be. You just remove that top frame, you advance your fabric how, wherever your next position is without taking off that metal frame. I mean, that is what is such a time saver. It just allows you to just focus on stitching you don't have to worry about um, taking the whole quilt off of the machine and repositioning the quilt, you know, on a work surface. And Chris Yost, you want to know, do I ever use more than one hoop guard? You know, I did try that and I kind of used to do it, but I've discovered I don't really need it. And it will... Um, it, you do lose a little bit of magnetic hold when you have the two hoop guards on there. So I think it's a trade-off that I'm not really uh, wanting to know. Let's see. Oh, Anne DeBeck. Uh, you know, call our customer service office and we will send you, it's not rubber, it is suede that protects the bottom of your frame. So if yours is peeling, call our office, we'll be happy to send that to you which is 888-739-055. And um, let's see, uh, Louise Armstrong, you have the larger frame and you think you need to get the smaller one also. You know, there's, I use these hoops for 90% of my hooping. So I, just like you would use different size standard hoops, so would you use different size magnetic hoops. Like I showed you, four by four, five by seven. Oh mine, it is just awesome. And let's see, Becky Munns, uh, the magnetic hoops, it didn't come with the plastic guard. Our hoop, our, our teal hoops, our monster hoops have always come with a plastic shield since the very first day. And how well does the magnetic hoop hold the fabric? Well, let's take a look what's happening over there on the big quilt. 
Oh, well, it's a little fuzzy, but let's just bear with it a moment because it will come back into uh, focus. But you can see it's holding that quilt and it's just fine. And I showed you that it would hold this table runner and it would hold terry cloth towels. And here I can show you it's holding these blue jeans. It's not going anywhere. That's the hoop. It's on there. So it will hold just about all of it. And Karina Paulson, you want a new machine? Of course you do. Of course you do. And you deserve it. You deserve it. You should have whatever machine you want. You don't want to put your family into, you know, financial jeopardy, but you should have whatever machine you want. And, you know, they have lots of financing options out there for people. And I understand right now those kind of high-end ones are really getting quite affordable. So uh, super fun. Yeah. And, okay, so uh, any, if there aren't any more questions, uh, I want to show you. Oh, Bernadette R. She said, would you cut the stabilizer? I think you mean after you embroider. So yeah, I do fuse it onto the back of the garment, mainly garments, and then and do the embroidery. And then I heat it again, because when I heat it again from the back, I can then lift off that uh, stabilizer because the heat kind of softens the adhesive and lets you just um, release it if you want to. Now, if you heat it, and don't pull it away. Once it cools, it will stay attached to the garment. But yes, you're right. I do. I pull it back a little bit and I trim around that uh, stabilizer. So what size hoop is the 139? I'm guessing, but I think that's the five by seven. Yes. And Rita, you love your Solaris. Okay. And JR, can you do the drum test on it? Well, I can do the drum test. But here's the thing with the magnetic hoop. It is different than a standard hoop. If I do the drum test, I can put my hand through. I can put like here, you probably, can you hear it? Do you hear that? I don't know if you actually hear that. But um, I can push the fabric through. So that's not really, the drum test doesn't really work for a magnetic hoop because you're able to pull that fabric and tighten that fabric right under the needle. So the drum test isn't really that important with a magnetic hoop. This is the test that's important. Will it hold without separating? So if this was um, uh, maybe a heavy leather jacket and I tried to do this and then this started to fall down, well, then we know it's too, it's not strong enough for that leather jacket. But um, as long as you can hold a hoop, hold the fabric in the hoop in this fashion, that's your test. Then you know it's going to be, um, it's going to work when you're stitching. JR, thumbs up. Thank you, dear. Lisa, what stabilizer was I talking about? I was talking about our no-show mesh, which is a fusible. Well, it comes fusible and non-fusible. So let me, let me bring it a close up, maybe overhead. We get a good look at this. You can see, uh, you can see my mess here now. It's kind of like a waffle fabric, right? Uh, so it's woven. This sheen is the glue. And on the other side, there is no sheen. So when you purchase the kind that is not fusible, you have this finish on both sides and the fusible has the shiny glue side and that's what you would fuse to your garment. All right, I think that's good. Please do another towel hooping in a four, in a five by seven, does the towel go over the magnetic hoop? Okay, sure, let's do another towel. Happy to do that. Let me see if I can kind of clean up my workspace here a little bit. And when I say clean, that means throw those blue jeans over there on the floor out of harm's way. <laughs> so here's my five by seven hoop. I'm going to put some tear away down. I'm going to find my towel. Here we go. Okay, so you want to know, here's my attachment, right? You want to know, is the towel, the body of the towel going to go this way? Or is it going to go this way? Or is it going to go that way, right? Well, that would really depend on your design. And, uh, you know, 
theoretically, I would probably go in maybe in this fashion if I'm doing a large vertical design that is maybe six inches tall and three or four inches wide, then I would probably hoop this way. And same kind of technique, I'm going to attach that magnetic frame. Here's my attachment on the left-hand side right here. And so I have keep this perpendicular. I can feel my metal frame on the bottom and then I just drop that in place. And then I can smooth and tug that fabric. If this was a big bath towel, then I would probably hoop it with the body of the towel, this large portion of the towel, over on the left-hand side, extending over the embroidery arm so that it's not all bundled up on this side where the head of the machine is. So I would do it in this fashion. And again, I can, I can feel my metal bottom, so I kind of know that I'm somewhat centered in there. And then I take that magnetic top, I have it perpendicular uh, right along that attachment edge and just drop it. And then I can, now see, I'm not, cr I'm, I'm not straight here. So that's not a problem. I just lift that, bod that top frame and I just adjust that fabric so that it is then nice and straight. And that's what I use my rulers for. So see the top of the border here is at the seven. So I want the top of the border here to be at the seven and it looks like it's off a little bit. So I just lift that notch and then just slide that fabric over until I'm happy with that placement. And that's how easy that is, isn't that great? <laughs> Dory, yeah, I am, <laughs> I am taking tossing lessons from Julia Child. You should see this floor. We need another camera because there's blue jeans over there. There's a t-shirt, there's a ribbon, there's a bloody napkin because I actually cut my hand while <laughs> I was demoing, but I didn't bleed on the fabric. Oh my. So all good. Okay, let's take a look. I have this really lovely selection of um, those hand embroidered napkins from long ago. So let me bring them into the scene so you can take a look. Aren't they lovely? Let me get centered under here. Look at these treasures. Aren't they something? So we have three different ones and I chose three because I thought the colors were just so lovely. They're all coordinated. And you know, this H, oh my goodness, look at that. So we have two colors, actually three colors of green. We have a very soft sea foam, kind of a medium tone, and then a really deeper forest green. And these three blend so lovely on this green tinted and edged um, handkerchief. All of these little satin stitches are so fine. And then the petals are padded. These are actually fairly dimensional. I don't think this camera can get that, but they are raised. Let me, if I put my, my uh, skewer there, you could see. Anyway, there is some open work that's done that is filled in with all these tiny little stitches. That same kind of technique is also applied on this kind of Celtic uh, border where you see all this beautiful greenery. Now this green is um, a medium tone while this darker green is like a midnight green. It is almost black. And it also accents this raised and padded satin that it designates that letter tiny, tiny little white stitches here with leaves and centers, even a swirly vine. That is absolutely amazing. On this example, this letter N for November, we have shadow work. So let's turn it over and you can see on the wrong side that the satin stitches are beautifully worked and that's what gives the color that is peeking through this very delicate organdy. So the, the, fabric, the thread really lies on the wrong side, creating that shadow image. Beautiful raised French knots, beautiful corded satin, 
edging all the way around. We even have yellow um, shadow work done here also. Each of these petals, you see all that pretty yellow and then it bleeds through so delicately on this side. And then here we actually have some applique. So this is another layer of fabric that adds um, dimension to this flower and our ivy leaves. Isn't that just outstanding? Oh, I love them. They're just beautiful. Yeah, and Lisa Schwartz. Now these are hand embroidery and this is uh, representative of some of the collection that I received from Richards Jardin, who is the founder and owner of embroideryarts.com. They are the only company in the world that just does fine lettering fonts that you can purchase by the letter or the whole alphabet. And they are really wonderful. Let's see. Um, and so thank you. I'm glad that you enjoyed them. They are just beautiful. And I, I like sharing them with all of you. Phyllis Thompson, you want to know the rulers of your magnetic frame. So they come with the hoops. They do come with the hoops. You get four in the hoop that are in the box. Now, I will tell you, they are folded in half and they're inside the instructions so don't throw that away open that up and make sure you um you get your rulers because they're right there well thank you all for joining me today it was a lot of fun next week we're going to talk about continuous embroidery and how you can do beautiful fashion garments like you know, hemlines and waistlines that are all repeated and how you would get that perfect placement on any machine. You don't have to have the top of the line to use this technique. So thank you for joining me and we'll see you next week.